Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope doing well. Today we're going to take a look around a, another part exchange that I've bought in. I'm trying to do these a bit more regularly now. People are saying they've been missing them, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm sat on a car that we paid £400 for, and Jason, who took this in part exchange, thought that this was probably just going to head down the scrapyard, because he had, you know, it's just a very pessimistic view on this. I mean, he did the deal. He agreed to give them £400 for it, and I think... I assumed, based on its MOT history, that that's why he thought it was going to end up in the scrapyard. And there may be an element of that, but I'm feeling a bit more optimistic. So let's have a look around this car. Um, it's got one day of MOT left, which is today. So we're going to have a quick look around it. I'm going to take it out, drive it, and then really we're going to have to try this for an MOT. I think we want to put it on the ramp first, check it out, and then see if we can't get an MOT in it. If we, if we can, we're laughing. I think even if we can't, we should be able to get our money back. So. Let's have a look around what we bought. So here is the 2003 Suzuki Grand Vitara. It doesn't, I mean, in some angles it looks pretty good. I mean, on the whole, for a, what is it? 21 year old little four x four, quite desirable these now, surely. Little 1.6, um, little off-roader, proper off-roader. I mean, most four x four things now, like that's probably not even that Vitara, not four wheel drive. We've got an Evoke here that's a Land Rover, but it's two-wheel drive. Proper four-wheel drive. This was actually get you places off-road for sure. Um, it is a bit tatty, yes. It's maybe slightly higher mileage, 138,000, yes. But it's an auto. And look, it's all in one piece, all for 400 quid. Um, it looks like it's had a bit of a prang here, but you know, it's going to be an off-roader, farm-type car type thing. Uh, I don't think that's going to put too many people off, to be honest. We might be able to pull that back out a little bit. If we get if we get an MOT on this, it might be worth doing. Obviously, a few scuffs and things around there. We've got pretty good tyres. Actually, yeah, they are got a full set of Yokohama Blue Earth 4s on this, which tells me that someone spent a bit of money keeping this in pretty good shape. The side steps are actually pretty well attached to the car. Normally, they're rusted out. That's got to be a good sign. They're not just, like, hanging off or broken. Quite a lot of scratches around the fuel cap, which is a bit weird, but there's that. We've got a good quality Bridgestone spare as well, which feels very kind of hard and but it's actually not cracking, just doesn't feel very rubbery. Um, what have we got going around the back? No tow bar, That's probably a good thing. Another scuff over here, again, another good tyre, few general scuffs. As per usual, the wheels want a good acid clean. Bit more scuff around there. It's a little bit. The bonnet doesn't really fit right, does it? Something. I wonder if that's come up while they've been driving, because look, it's dropped low there and has scraped off paint on the corner. It's high here and moved away. That's odd. Follow this body line from here. You got a gap, 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 no gap. That would be alarm bells if you were looking at a I guess uh, maybe that's from where this is shunted in. It's done a squat up because it's really pinched tight here, but there's a bigger gap there. I don't know. It's 400 quid. I mean, people are going to be, people will be, let me turn around so you actually see me in this sun, uh, getting in the comments like, oh, he's paid 400 quid. What's he expecting? Oh, all he does is moan this guy. Come on, pull yourself together. What I'm doing is saying, this is a car that we've taken in part exchange for 400 quid. Days gone by, I would just, you know, put this through the workshop. We'd get an MT on it and we trade it on or something, and that would be that gone. But people seem to enjoy watching these things and kind of picking up, you know, what's happened with this car, the history of this car, what's the condition like? That's why we're doing it. I'm not moaning about it whatsoever. I set fire to it right now for all I care. It's not the end of the world, it's 400 quid. I'm just trying to let you know about the car and what's happening with it. So for those who do comment those sorts of things, try and lighten up and let's enjoy the rest of the video. So we've only got one key and we don't have remote central lock-in. We just got a Bogo key like this. Um, probably Dan could make us a key like this very cheaply. He's got the equipment to do the chips and whatever, but the remote bit is what's trickier. Now it is unlocked and I can lock it and it has central locking. But if I unlock it by the central locking, oh, hang on, it did do it then. This goes to show my lack of knowledge when it comes to older cars like this, I guess. So one turn, it will unlock just this door. Turn it again and it unlocks the others. I was struggling with that the other day. It's embarrassing, isn't it? it shows how little I know. Um, 
thinking, oh, it does remote central locking when you lock, but not when you unlock it, but it does. So take that back. It's improved itself already. I did notice there's a bottle of Red X petrol system cleaner in the door. That, you know, could be concerning. It could be someone like my dad who just thinks that cars should have that in them. You know, it's, that's going to fix all problems. Put some, put some cheap, nasty Red X stuff in it, which I don't recommend this stuff. I would get something a bit higher quality if you're going to do that sort of thing, injector cleaner. Um, I did wonder if maybe it had emissions issues. We'll do a vehicle score on this in a bit, and we'll look at the MA's history so we, uh, we can find out whether that is the case or not. Seats don't look too bad, do they? There is some kind of watery stains, which look far worse through the screen here as I look than they do in real person. Same goes over there. It's like something horrendous has happened, doesn't it? But actually, that doesn't really stand out in person. Um, there's some questionable like watery stains. I imagine, actually, thinking about it, this car has probably had the seats folded flat um, to be like boot space in here because those seats don't look too bad. I mean, it looks like someone's done a turbo shark there, but yeah, on the whole, for, for what it is, I actually think this is quite clean. Uh, let's have a quick look in the boot. Now, I thought maybe uh, the reason this you know, was going to be something that Jason thought was going to go straight to the scrapyard would be these have got a tendency to rust, as I said, with like the side steps and whatever. I expected to see them hanging off. I have already had this carpet up, as you can see. This side looks really good. This is where you'd expect to see rust. And I was thinking, oh, great. That's an early feature, isn't it? Look at that. 12 volt socket in the back. Is that original? If it is, they were well ahead of their time. Um, but this side does have some rust around that seat mounting. Now, it's not too bad. Depends what it's like on the other side. That's going to be what kind of decides it for this car, I think. We need to get it on the ramp. Maybe I'll get underneath it in a minute and have a quick look and see how rusty things look. If we get it on a ramp and check this thing over before we send it for MT, you might have an opportunity to kind of wire wheel everything up, put some under seal on it, make it look 10 times better. And then actually you've got a cracking little four x four, which I'll need to do some kind of auto trader research to find out how much it could be worth. Um, but I reckon, 1.6 auto 4x4's got to be a couple of grand, surely. That is what saves it for sure. Auto. Someone's definitely going to want an auto. I mean, people always want these little Vitara Suzuki things anyway. And it's in pretty good nick, isn't it? Let me fire up the ignition in a minute. And tell you the exact mileage. It says hello when you start it. The exact mileage is 138,684, which isn't high for the age, is it? Some people will consider it high, but it's not high for the age, that's for sure. We've got all our books here. I had a look through these a minute ago when I pulled it around here. There isn't any service history. We've got the V5 uh, and everything like that inside and some old MOT certificates. Well, I know this has had four keepers, I believe, but we don't have any service history, which is a shame. Again, on this sort of thing, probably not going to be the end of the world. Um, let's have a look under the bonnet and then we'll do... I wonder if this bonnet opens, considering it's so knackered and bent around. Right, here we are. Here is our 16 valve in line four, by the looks of it. Um, right, let's have a quick look at the oil. Oh, if I can undo it. Almost. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. Pretty decent colour to it. No smeg in there. What's this got in the way? Got anything in our expansion bottle? Uh, that's quite a rusty, pooey brown colour, actually. So that could... I mean, there is some redness to it, but that is is that because of rust? I don't know. That could probably do with a changeover, couldn't it? So this, if we manage to get this through an anti, then it deserves a service. A good full service. But... It needs to pass that MOT first because without the MOT, it is going to be worthless. An exaggeration, actually. It won't be worthless at all. Someone would want this for an off-roader, wouldn't they? Probably for 400 quid. So, yeah, it's definitely not as dramatic as I'm making it out to be. But it's certainly going to be worth a lot more if it has got an MOT. Right, let's have a quick look at the... There is some surface corrosion, for sure. But what I can see from here, I wouldn't say it looks drastic. 
my knees aren't up to uh, kneeling on gravel for too long, so we're not going to find out until we get this in the workshop. When we do get it in the workshop, we'll make sure we film it so we can see uh, what's going on there. But in the meantime, let's have a look at doing a vehicle score check. Then we can find out A, how this car scores, and B, whether there's anything we need to look out for when it comes to looking under that car. Right, I've got to try and remember what the registration is. That was silly. Why didn't I get that first? It's not going to be written on in here because we haven't actually got the service book. Let's go out front and grab the registration. So it is Whiskey Foxtrot 53 Charlie Hotel Victor. It's making weird noises again. Some kind of electrical adjustment, which I wouldn't expect on something this old. Mmm. Can you hear that? Stopped again now, but will it start? What the hell is that? It's coming from that left-hand light, I think. So maybe is it trying to do some kind of light adjustment? Very weird indeed. Right, so yeah, our score is 148 out of 999, so needs work. Doesn't surprise me, it's an old car. Let's see exactly what it says about the score. Looking good, long-term owner, recent MOT pass rates high, average yearly mileage is perfect. Bad bits, over 20 comments on recent MOTs. Vehicles over 10 years old, vehicle mileage is above 100,000. We know that, so that's not too bad, but the MOT history is what we want to check out. MOT history is just one of the many things that you can check out using vehicle score. You can do an AI mechanic, you can check out the car's performance, you can check out car details, you can find out whether it's ULES compliant. Should we do that first? Is this ULES compliant? It is petrol after all. It is. So if you bought this, you gave yourself a nice little 4 before, and you wouldn't have to pay to go into some of those cities where they charge you an extortionate rate just to drive around. Let's have a look at our last MOT, which is the one that runs out today. Um, front exhaust pipe, flange joint deteriorated, power steering pipe uh, hose slightly corroded, rear vehicle structure is corroded, but structural rigidity is not significantly reduced, both rear chassis legs lightly corroded, or slightly corroded I should say. Uh, front tyre slightly damaged, I think they must have been changed. Front bumper cover damaged, I think that's what we looked at, isn't it? It's got a a crack in it. Uh, front registration plate, we're not too worried about that. Rear both, rear wheel arches corroded behind arch trims. Will that have developed more in the year since this was last emptied? Rear brake pipe corroded, rear tyre slightly damaged, cracking. Again, another tyre, so I think all the tyres must have been changed because they look like they've got a good tread, they're good Yokohamas. Still making that weird electrical noise out there. So rust is going to be our major thing to look out for here. I think if this car passes as MOT and has a few advisories, it's not going to be into the world. It's still going to have some value for sure. It's not one of those cars where having a few advisories for corrosion and whatever is going to completely kill the value. I think it'll still be okay, but we do need to check how bad that rust is. Now, if you were looking at buying this car yourself, the most important thing you need to do is to make sure you do a history check to make sure you're not buying a car that's been previously written off. It's got finance still against it. It's probably un pretty unlikely in a car like this. But you don't know whether it's been used as a taxi, ex-police car, or MOD, whether it's been imported or exported, whether it's been for a salvage auction, unrecorded, and there might be pictures, all of which you can check out using vehicle scores checked. You can do the salvage report for £2.97, the ultimate report for £8.97, or the ultimate report plus, which I recommend for £11.97. That's the same as the ultimate report, but you get £10,000 worth of Xperia data guarantee. So should something show up in that car's history that wasn't on the report, you'd have £10,000 worth of data guarantee. And if you use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you get 20% off and makes that just £9.58. Also, another good reason to use Vehicle Score is they're now running monthly giveaways of £600 cash. If you've done a paid report, you are immediately entered and you get the chance to win. So check out vehiclescore.co.uk and don't forget to use the code SHIFTINGMETAL20. Fires up on the button. We've got parking sensors. Definitely aftermarket, I have to say. I don't know why they're beeping constantly. Stop now. Strange. They must be pointed quite sideways, I think. Right, we'll take this for a quick spin, mainly just to figure out if there's anything else going on with this car that I want to let the technicians know about when it comes to checking it over for its MOT. Wheel bearing, brakes, suspension, that sort of thing. 
if anyone lets me pull out at any time whatsoever. Thank you, Volvo. Oh, it's a speed machine. Does our radio work? Oh. Bit of jazz. Lovely. Gearbox seems all right. It is slow as molasses, I have to say. Foot flat to the floor. 16 valve power. That must be all that red X in the system. Oh, okay, yeah. Bit of a suspension knock there. I mean, these are things they're gonna pick up on the MOT anyway, I guess. But we just wanna make sure this is a car that's definitely worth saving, investing in. God, it's slow. That's foot flat to the floor, 45, 50, 55, 60. It's quite steady though. Let's try the brakes. God, they're good. Yeah, that works quite well. I think the fact that we got a soft suspension made it feel pretty strong. If you just <laughs> just launch forward. Good tyres too, obviously. Let's got to remember this right-hand indicator. Let's stop here and we'll see if our four-wheel drive engages. So, do I need to? I suppose I need to be in neutral. Let's put it into four low. Oh yeah, I need to put it back into drive. Yeah, I can definitely feel, as I turn the wheel, you want to feel the skipping that you can probably hear. Just a quick, easy way to tell whether it's actually gone into four-wheel drive. So, back into two-wheel drive, high ratio, for economy and comfort of driving. Actually seems pretty solid, despite that one little clonk that I felt I heard when we went over a bump before that felt like it might have been a ball joint, maybe. Haven't heard it again. Maybe it was my imagination, maybe it was a very harsh pothole. It actually feels like a pretty decent example of one of these. It's not going to blow you away with performance, comfort, quality, any of those things, but actually is a decent at 1.6. 4x4 four four for someone. This has got potential. We'll just try and stop somewhere and get a little picture for the thumbnail before we clean it all up. Right, so that all seems pretty good. I just want to do a check now on what these are actually worth on Autotrader. I can't get just a generic price for these because it's too old. So, Suzuki, Grand Vitara. Wonder how many there'll actually be available. Year, 2003. Seems to be a few. Five from the year 2003. How many with a mileage above 100 is what it says. Three cars to look at. Okay, so we've got a five door for uh, 2,295 pounds. That's on 109,000 miles. Here's a two-door, three-door, whatever you want to call it, like ours, but it looks uglier, and it's on 102,000 miles. They want 1,500 quid for that. Then, yeah, is that an auto? Probably not. Is the one above an auto? Probably not. Then we've got a 2.6 V6 auto with a gas conversion in Manchester on 123,000 miles for two grand. So I reckon we can get two grand for this, being a 1.6 in reasonable condition with the automatic. I think that's, I think that's sensible. So it's well worth getting sorted. So with that said, I'll catch up with you when this is in the workshop and we'll find out what we think it's gonna to need to get it through an MOT. I'm going to be looking the body on this. 
we had that on that last one, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, the last one, it wouldn't shut. Yeah, well, this one is partially open, but my lovely like front exhaust pipe flange deteriorated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not blowing, don't touch. It's clear. Uh, looks like your tyres might have been done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vehicle structure is corroded, we're not structurally. The whole chassis. The whole. Chassis has got corrosion on it. This one looks less crispy than the last one, doesn't it? I mean, it's corroded, but it's corroded. I think that, what they've written there, makes it sound like a well, it was last year, so it's a year out of date, but they, you know, vehicle structure corroded, but not structural rigidity, not since we used sassy legs slightly corroded, blah, blah. It's corrosion, uh, and they'll advise it. I mean, you can't, where the outriggers are, where it, the body mounts is okay. That's in great condition for one of these. Yeah, but I mean, you look here, this is what they're, this is what they're going on, and up around, but I mean, I've seen hell of a lot worse than that. I was say, if my MOT tester gave me an advisory for that, I'd go back in and can kick off. Yeah, so he's cooked, they, basically. But there is an engine oil leak. Now he's had a new starter motor. Rain Does that leak. not fix the oil leak? No, it's now got a water leak. Water pump's gone on it. I would probably say it's best just to send it for MOT. Yeah. Um, because I wouldn't even bother treating that. You say the water pump's gone? It looks like it, yeah. And that's cam belt on these. Can't remember. Personally, I'd send it, but we're starting to get in some uh, front brakes are starting to bind. But it's been used. I'd fail that. Good I was testing. See, so well, that's, that's a fail. Even with a four wheel drive, these should have auto hubs. Yeah, it's got auto hubs. Yeah. The backs, no, nothing. Oh, I'll see what Jay wants to do, really. I mean, it's quite good with some of the ones I've seen for corrosion. So, I think it's over dramatised with the corrosion. Yeah. I would send as. Personally, I would probably send the car as it is, see what happens. Yeah. The front brakes are binding on it now. Okay. But they might come with a bit of a travel. The water pump, the water pump is leaking. Well, it's certainly coming from that area because yeah. it's all and it's bad, it's red. Okay. So, whether they put an additive or it's just corrosion in the system. Um, there is an oil leak that's quite mired around, but it's, it's not physically. Much of a job to change on that? I can't get the bonnet open at the moment. Oh, Did you that'd have... be an MOT failure. Well, you can't inspect. Uh, well, I, we used to refuse, well, we didn't, we couldn't, if you can't test with the testing license, you can't test the vehicle. I don't know if the regulations yeah, change. They won't, they won't do it. I know because we had one the other day where they couldn't open the bonnet and they wouldn't test it. Yeah, you can't test it, yeah. Yeah, because it's a testable item, so it's a refuse to test. Uh, so we'll see if we can get that open and I can have a look. To be truthful, I, I wouldn't even spend any money on it at the moment. No, no, no. Let's, Let's get the bonnet to it open. Let's test it and then see what happens. happens. Yeah. 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 Lovely. Should be alright. Should be grand. Got Adrian on the case. Top man for the job. Right, it is the following week. I have sent my Grand Vitara for an MOT and it didn't fare very well, which I kind of expected to be honest. So let me tell you what it's failed on. <sighs> As you'll probably see from this screen recording I'm taking, it's quite the list. Windscreen wiper does not clear the windscreen effectively. Offside front uh, position lamp not working, front bumper damage likely to cause injury, near side front brake pads, offside rear seat belt, uh, area strength of continuity significantly reduced, floor to inner wheel arch, just goes on like that. Near side rear inner seat belt, rust. Offside rear inner seat belt, rust. Near side rear outer seat belt, rust. Offside outer seat belt, rust. Offside rear vehicle structure or chassis has excessive corrosion. Offside rear inner vehicle structure has excessive corrosion. Offside rear inner vehicle structure has chassis or, or structure or chassis has excessive corrosion. Near side outer vehicle structure Rust, rust, rust. And then there's an advisory for an oil leak, but not excessive. Doesn't sound very good, does it? 
I was hoping we'd get an MOT on this. It might have gone through with a few advisories. I mean, we'll still get this in the workshop in a minute and we'll have a look and see how bad it is because sometimes they're a bit overzealous. Because um, it seemed quite clean and they're just sometimes you get a feeling for a car whether it's rusty or not. And I didn't really feel like that one was. But we'll have a look. Um, but I do think worst case scenario, now those are 450 quid including the MOT that surely someone wants this for 800 quid, maybe even a thousand pounds as like a an off-roader or something. Um, maybe not. But we'll have, get it in the workshop, we'll check it over and decide whether it's actually something we want to bother doing or just get rid of it. I think probably just get rid of it at the moment, we're so busy, but we'll get it in the workshop and we'll have a look at it. Right, so Steph has got our Grand Patara on the ramp and gone through all of these failures. Um, I guess we'll just work our way through and see how serious or overzealous they seem. Here's just the underside of the car, generally speaking. A few bits are definitely looking a bit crusty, but not too bad on the whole, really, for this thing of this age. First up on our list is windscreen wiper does not clear the area, so it needs a wiper, that's no big deal. Position lamp, offside front not working, again, needs a bulb. Bumper damaged and likely to cause injury when grazed or contacted front. And I think that's what they're talking about. That tiny little kind of crack there, likely to cause an injury if you get grazed. Seems a bit overzealous. I'm sure you could heat that up and put some silicone in there as a you know little bodgy repair. Yes, they mean that. But Steph is saying that really it should be something that's really sticking out and you know likely to cause you like chop your leg off if it hits you, which you know I don't think it is, is it? But they didn't advise the number plate, strangely. Then we've got brake pads worn down to the wear indicator near side front. So this side, fair enough. You'd need some brake pads in there. Then we've got seatbelt anchorage, prescribed area, strength or continuity, significantly reduced offside rear, floor to wheel inner arch. And then we've got another one for offside rear. So offside rear, that's this side. So basically, let me grab the torch. We've got this rust up in here. So let me see if I can show you. I can't get the light very well. Basically, there's a hole in there. And you can't, oh, you can see up through there that rusted out. Uh, so you'd need like an outer seal in there to sort that out. So that's that bit. What they've done is done three things, because there's also here that that's a bit crusty. Oh, I'm not showing you. This bit here, right by this suspension mounting. Uh, so that's crusty as well. So they've kind of got three in one. Steph's saying that normally you would just fail one, not fail all three, but either way, it would need a seal doing there and something sorting out there, that sort of floor pan sorting. Then we've got similar the other side. It's just that hole up through there, but that suspension on the bush thing there, that looks okay this side, but we have got a hole through there as well. I don't know how well you can see that. You can just see it's all crusty and crap looking. So that is actually about the limit of the rust. It's just the two corners back there, which mm, probably wouldn't be the end of the world to fix. And I think this probably is maybe a... Is it a two grand vehicle done with an MOT and whatever? Possibly. I certainly don't want the hassle of doing this. What I am going to do is put a phone call into someone who I know does a bit of welding and say, do you want to do this? Um, and, you know, see if you can do a little repair for me and get it through. He might do, in which case, if we can get it done for a few hundred quid, it'd be well worth it because this was 400. If we get it done for a grand and we can sell it for two, we're laughing. But if it's a case of us having to do it, I do not want to sacrifice our time when we can be working on nice, you know, things like this Range Rover Evoke or whatever else to work on this. You know, time is the more valuable resource here rather than the monetary side of it. Yeah, got to prioritize. The only other thing was an oil leak, but not excessive. I mean, that wasn't a fail. That was just an advisory, but it is a pretty decent oil leak. Where that's coming from, you know, from the gearbox by the looks of it. Uh, so you probably want to sort that as well. Just to recap, the reality of it is probably sort that little bumper thing out, put a bulb in it, do some front brakes, and sort the welding out on the back. And probably, you know, put a nice new set of number plates on it rather than these rubbish ones. You'd have a decent little car that'd be worth selling. It's definitely the sort of stuff we would have done in the past. But can I be bothered now? I don't know. Let me make um, a text and 
see what they say. Hi Dan, we've got this uh, Suzuki Grand Vitara, that's the reg if you want to check out the MOT history. It has got... Just wondered if you'd be up for doing any welding on it. Uh, let me know. If not, no worries. But uh, if so, we'll get it dropped over. Right, so there we have it. Um, yeah, it's not as bad as it could have been, to be honest. Um, but whether we'll bother doing it or not, I don't know. Um, message a guy, Dan, who would do some welding for us at points. He said he can do it, but not for a few weeks. <sighs> do I just stick it down the farm for a few weeks, booked in with him to get it done? Or do I just try and get rid of it as is? I'm trying not to collect rubbish. If it's booked in somewhere, I don't know. I don't know. don't have a conclusive answer to that, to be honest. So I would say follow me on Instagram and I will put an update on there. I might even do a, a video on it again if we get it back and it's fixed up and we get an MNT on it. Um, but I might just be tempted just to plug it off. Either way, I'll let you know on Instagram. It's shifting underscore metal. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe. You could be in a chance of winning a Tag Heuer Formula One watch that I'm giving away when we reach 75,000 subscribers. And don't forget to check out my new website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where you could win a course of VXR or £5,000 cash or enter a competition for £1,000 cash or a competition for an awesome Casio Oak watch. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.